We have a data set with person and sales. Our task is simple. We need to get total sales for each sales rep in each month. Now, you're not going to believe this. This question came from Dancing Queen on Excel magic trick number 13, a video I posted 12 years ago. Now, in this video, we're going to see how to do it with some ifs and a pivot table. Next video, 1702, we'll see how to do it with the new amazing dynamic spilled array formulas. And in 1703, we'll see how to do a single cell formula using the amazing let function. Now in this video, we want to concentrate on learning two different ways to use the sum ifs function. We already have our conditions and criteria in the cells. So in the top cell, we'll use equals sum ifs. The sum range. Well, we need to highlight this entire column. And this is an Excel table, so I simply hover my cursor at the top. And when I see my downward pointing black arrow, I click. That puts in the table name and the field name in square brackets. That column has all the numbers we potentially want to add, comma. But now we need to specify which ones to add. Criteria range. Well, for this row, we need Chantel. Down here, we'll need Miki. So we have to highlight the person column. That's all of the people, comma. And now in criteria one, this is where we put the condition. Right now, some ifs would be adding all of the sales from this column for Chantel. But because we want the month and the dates are individual days, we have to specify the lower and upper limit. Now, for that condition right there, Chantel, that's a relative cell reference. So as we copy down, it will move to each new row, comma. Now, for criteria range two, we have two conditions on date. So we're actually going to have to repeat the date twice. So in criteria range two, I select date, comma. The first condition for us is going to be the lower limit. Now, if I just select that date, then it would only pick out that exact date. I need to very carefully, before it, specify, please get all the dates in this column that are greater than or equal to the lower limit. So before the cell reference G11, in double quotes, I have to put the comparative operator. Now, in Excel, you don't have the math comparative operator greater than or equal to as a single symbol. So you have to put greater than and then the equal symbol. Then we have to join it using the ampersand. And together, the cell reference and the comparative operator become the condition for the lower limit, comma. Criteria range three, we have to repeat date, comma. Criteria range three, in double quotes, less than or equal to, in double quotes, and join it to the upper limit. And that is our formula. Now, this is an old school formula, which means it works in any version back to Excel 2007. Close parentheses. Now, I'm going to use Control-Enter to enter it because I want to keep the cell selected and immediately point to that fill handle. And when I move my selection cursor over the fill handle, it turns to the crosshair or angry rabbit cursor. There it is, angry rabbit, double click and send it down. Now, because I copied it down a column, I have to come to the bottom and hit F2 because I need to verify that I got all the cell references in the correct location. And they're all correct. Now, that works in any version. Now, let's see the amazing new school formula, which has two benefits. And what we're going to see here only works in Microsoft Excel 365. Well, we still use some ifs, and we still use the sum range, comma, date range, comma, in double quotes, greater than or equal to, because this is the lower limit, and join it to. But in the new Excel calculation engine, we don't highlight a single cell. We highlight all the conditions. What we're doing here is a function argument array operation. I gave that argument an array of items. So now some ifs is programmed to deliver an array of answers, one for each row. Comma, we do date again, repeat it, comma, less than or equal to in double quotes and highlight the entire end date. Now, the two benefits are this. When we enter this, because some ifs will deliver multiple answers, 
they'll automatically spill down the column. So we don't have to manually copy. The other thing that doesn't come into play for this formula, because we used an Excel table, is we don't have to worry about locking the cell references. All right, here we go. When I hit Enter, automatically spills down. Now, obviously, I did something wrong. I don't know what I did. But I want you to notice something, that each cell below the top cell is grayed out. That means the spilled value is there, but the formula doesn't live there. To edit the formula, we have to go to the top cell and hit F2. What I forgot to do, of course, is put the condition for the person. Now, another cool thing about some ifs, in this formula right here, we started with person, then went to start and end date. Because some ifs actually does an AND logical test, it doesn't matter in which order we put the columns and the conditions. So at the end, cursor there, comma, criteria range 3, persons, comma, criteria 3, the entire column. And so now I've edited it in the top cell. Now when I hit Enter, it spills the correct results. Now, the reason that we would probably use some ifs, and that's the original question asked about some ifs, is because the advantage of doing a formula over the next method we're going to see, pivot table, is if the source data changes, everything will update. So if this was actually 1, we can see down here, when I hit Enter, formulas instantly update. Now I'm going to Control Z. Now let's see the easy way to do this. We're going to use a pivot table. We have a proper data set, field names at the top, records and rows, empty cells all the way around. I click in a single cell. I go up to Insert, Tables, Pivot Table, From Table or Range. It got the name of the table correct. Existing worksheet, I'm going to put it right here, L10. Click OK. And this is the simplicity and beauty and amazingness of pivot tables. I simply drag person down to rows, and I get a unique list. Now notice over here we had to type this out, right? But watch what happens when I bring date down. Now the dates over in the table are daily dates. But in a pivot table, when I drag it down to rows, it automatically groups. So without creating a lower and upper limit, internally it just creates January, February, March. And we'll do the equivalent of the lower and upper date over here. Now, I don't need date. That's why we have that little plus there. So I'm going to drag that off. And now I drag sales down to values. And bam, just like that, pivot tables rule. Now I want to click in one cell somewhere in this column. Right click, number formatting. Don't use format cells, number formatting. And in a pivot table, when we use the single tab number Format Cells dialog box, when I select a particular format here, it applies it to the field, not to the individual cells, which is what we want to do in a pivot table. All right, so I click Number with a comma, click OK. And at the top, I'll double click. And at the end, I'm going to rename this, click OK. And so we saw old school works in any version. New school only works in Excel 365. And of course, forever school. Because forever, and I imagine forever moving forward too, pivot tables are the fastest and easiest. But for the forever school, if you come over and change Miki to 1, that instantly updates. But over here, you have to right click Refresh. Uh, so for old school, new school, and forever school, that was a lot of fun. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And don't forget, two other videos with two other methods coming to a YouTube theater soon.